Hi all, Fat Andy here. Right, cooking in the kitchen. Now, this recipe, um, I will say, it was a James Martin's recipe from about five years ago. And um, I've never done it myself. I've looked at it and I always wanted to do it. And I thought that looked absolutely lovely. So I'm going to attempt to have a go and see how we get on with it. So what we're going to actually have is herb coated roast beef with beetroot and Yorkshire pudding. That's a nice piece of beef I've got. Right there, looking lovely. Nice bit of top rump. Now he used fillet. My wallet don't go that far to fillet, so I've got the next best thing, what I think is a nice piece of top rump. So um, yeah, let's get down, let's get started, and um, let's see what this thing is all about. Right, first thing we need for this is four large beetroots. Now, these are the size I managed to get hold of. Um, some of them are a little bit small there, but I'm gonna use these. This is exactly what I've got. So the first thing we are going to do with this is just take the stalks off, chop that tail off. We're gonna cook these like that in a pan of water for 40 minutes, all right? So uh, don't have to peel them or anything, because that'll hold that together. So uh, let me get on with this. Right, once you cut your beetroot and everything, keep hold of these, don't throw these away, all right? Because they're gonna be cooked as well. So let's just move back here. Right, I'll put this beetroot in a pan of cold water, and we're now gonna bring this to the boil, um, and then reduce it, let it simmer, around 40 minutes, okay? So uh, yeah, I'll get on with this. Right, we're gonna do the Yorkshire puddings. Now, ideally you can do this um, overnight, but I'm not doing it overnight at the moment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get 100 grams measured out here of plain flour. In fact, I'll tell you what I'll, I will do. I think what I'm gonna do is, um, yeah, 100, sorry, 100 grams of plain flour. Get that right in a minute. Right, beetroot and they come, I'm gonna start boiling in a minute. I've got them on. Um, the next thing we're gonna need is four eggs. Let me get the eggs. Right, so I've got the flour weighed out. Um, four eggs, just give them a quick, quick beat in the old, uh, Job there. Tip that in with the flour. And then a 300 ml of milk, full fat milk. I always use full fat milk. You can use semi skimmed if you want. And uh, that goes in there as well. Now, at the moment, I don't put salt and pepper in this at the moment. I'll let that leave that until um, when that can. Uh, after it's rested. Right, and then just, I always use a hand whisk now, not an electric whisk, I used to, and then I found out that all you were doing really was just whisking all the air out of them and everything else, and um, they weren't rising how I liked them for rice. So, uh, yeah, just give this a quick whisk. Ideally, if you do this the night before, they even let it rest even more. But, um, yeah, I'm not, but it doesn't matter. I'll assume before you're gonna do it, it's fine. Well, let me carry on with this. Right, just about done. That's what we're looking at, with your consistency. That is gonna go into a jug, which will make it easier to pour. And I'm gonna let that now settle in the fridge for a good hour, hour and a half. Right, the beetroot now has been simmering away there for 40 minutes. That's all done. The next stage, drain all that liquid off. Be careful not to splash yourself with beetroot. I'll tell you now, that will stain. <clears throat> that's a sod to get off your hands. <laughs> Right, and that's what you end up with like that. Now we're gonna let these cool before we touch them. Um, get them, let them cool right down. Then we're gonna peel them with some kitchen paper, protect the hands, 
and um, slice them up and they'll go in with the roast beef. Right. Right, while we're waiting for the beetroot to cool down, um, I've got some uh, fresh parsley. Um, I wanted to get some fresh thyme as well, and I couldn't get any. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use dried thyme with it. So, what I'm going to do, first of all, is just get all this um, fresh parsley chopped up. I'll get on with this, and I'll come back to you. Right, that's the fresh parsley chopped up. God, that smells nice, that do. I just... Really wanted to get the fresh thyme, but I couldn't, so I got the dried. I'm just going to mix it in at the end of the day, and um, there's going to be a couple of uh, tablespoonfuls. We just exactly finished that up, and we're just going to get this all mixed in together, and this is going to go on to the meat when we're ready, right. I'll set that to one side and I'll come back to you. Right, beetroots are now done. So the best way to do these is stop you getting the old stuff on your hands. Just give it a kitchen roll, like so, and then just go along and peel the skins off, like so, and that'll stop you getting all the little red, red um, dye on your fingers, because that, I tell you, it's a sod to get out. <laughs> Take it from me. If you've got a pair of little gloves, disposable gloves, then use them. The skin just peels off like so. Right, I'll get on with this. That's why you use a tissue, but I still end up with a little bit on the end of the fingers. But hey, right, that's those done. Right, next stage now is for the beef. So we're going to do, get a good old lump of butter, place that in the pan. Now I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. So the last thing I want to do is to burn this butter. So um, keep that sort of uh, medium to high, sort of three quarters of the way through. Get that in that pan and just melt that butter off. Right, while I'm waiting for this butter to melt, I've got a, one of these silicone um, jobbies for the old Yorkshire puddings. I've shown so you this before. If you use one of these, make sure you put it on or a tray, because otherwise you try to pick it up, that'll flop everywhere. Beef dripping in there. That's going to go in the oven and get that nice sizzling hot now. Right, butter's melted. Now for the beef. So we get this nice piece of beef straight into the pan. Now what I'm going to do is sear this all over. So it's a nice brown on each side of it. Right, let's flip that over. We've only had a couple of minutes, that's all you want. Get that turned over like so. Onto that side. We'll just let that go for a minute or two. So I'll just do it either side. And then that'll be done. Right, that's all nicely browned off either side. So we'll just take it off the heat for a sec. Knock that off. Get the tin. We'll just let that rest there in the butter for a minute. Right, the next thing we're going to do is get this tin, get some herbs, all those nice herbs I had, and just make a little bed of it on the bottom, and that's where your beef is going to set. We'll get the beef out of the pan, and we're just going to set it straight on top those herbs right next thing we're going to do is get these beetroots what have been cooked and peeled cut that just cut these into quarters basically like so and they are going to set nicely around that beef as you can see there and turn that one round right up Get on with this. Right, that's the beetroot all add around the beef. The next stage is to get some black treacle. Right, that's the old Lyle's black treacle. Now don't go mad with this, you only want about a teaspoon um, and a half on here really. So we're gonna run that across there. 
you spread that over the top of this beef. Like so, about one and a half teaspoonfuls should do it. Just want to get a knife, I'm spreading this around now, so that will run down the sides and get that in there, incorporated in there. Like you say, we're not making toffee or nothing. We're just coating that over. Like so. Right, that is nearly ready. And then the next thing we do, the last thing we do before it goes into the oven, is the rest of the herbs go over the top. God, that smells good. That really, really do smell good. And that is now ready for the oven. Now, 20 minutes for medium rare. Around about 35 for medium. And then 45, 50 upwards, sort of getting towards the well done mark. I'm gonna hit this round in there for about 35 minutes. So, uh, yeah, we'll come back to you when she's cooking. Right, um, I haven't got the meat in yet, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the Yorkshire puddings and they're going to go in the meat because I'm going to go down for 30, 35 minutes. So, um, yeah, this has been uh, resting now for a couple of hours. So, um, let me just take that out of there and just lay that down. A little bit of salt, not too much. A little bit of black pepper. And then just going to bring this back to life. Now, if you leave this overnight, you'll, you'll end up with a little separation on it. We just need a little bit of bringing it back to life. And that is now ready to go in. So I'll get these Yorkshires um, in the tin and uh, get them in the oven with the beef. Right. Meat ain't too far off being done, and so is the Yorkshire puddings. Right, next stage now is to make the gravy. Okay, and this red wine with um, some nice beef stock here. Um, what I made up. No, I'm, okay, the pan I'm using what I boiled the beetroot in. I haven't cleaned it at all, I'm just leaving the, that little bit of residue in there from the beetroot. So, right, I've got some red wine, as you can see there. Now, when James Martin done this, he said use an expensive wine. My budget doesn't, I'm afraid, stretch for expensive wine, so uh, I got this. So what we're looking for is round about um, a glass of red wine. And that, to bring that camera up a bit, is, I don't know, that's the timer going off. Hang one sec. Right, that's that sorted out. Right. So what we want, glass of red wine, switch the pan on, get some heat into it. Put the red wine in first, into the pan. I'm just gonna take some of that alcohol off that, just reduce it, just burn a little bit of that alcohol off. Right, be back in a sec. Let's move that forward a bit. Just let this, uh, Let's just bubble off a little bit. As soon as I'll start, start sort of filling up a bit. Okay, let's spell that. Let me just put a fan on in there. Set fire to the place. So really, the only thing I've done different in this recipe is I haven't used expensive red wine because my budget doesn't stretch that far. I haven't used a filler, the beef, in that. And the only other thing I changed on this recipe is, unfortunately, I had to use um, the old uh, dried thyme. 
because I couldn't get fresh. But that is it, really. Oh, and I will be putting, um, just to thicken it a little bit, I will be using some gravy granules in for this as well. Now, um, right, so what we're going to do, I've got 800 ml here, a nice beef stock. He, oh, sorry, he did use field stock. But, um, yeah. He's a multi-billionaire, and I am. <laughs> right, that's all in there. We're now going to let this cook down a bit, just to reduce this a little bit. You know what? I'm letting this uh, gravy um, reduce down. Yeah, this this red wine, four and a half quid, I think it was, something like that, from Aldi's. <laughs> that's not a bad wine, to be honest. I don't care what anyone say. It's just nice and easy drinking. It's lovely. It's not too dry. It'll draw your ass to your elbows, as they say. My daughter, a couple of, uh, well, a couple of three years ago, came on with this big Christmas hamper. Really expensive. Had this wine in there. About 40, 50 quid a bottle of this red wine. Well, she don't drink red wine. She said, do you want it? I said, yeah, I'll have it. Put it on the side. She said, it's a really expensive wine. You know, I opened that up, it's the biggest little shite I've ever tried in my life, honestly. God, it was awful. No, not for me. I'm not, you know, I'm not that sort of person who like that really dry, a bit expensive and like, I like something that I can enjoy, basically. And this will do me four and a half minutes of bottle. Floyd on the med. Right, I'll get on with this. i show you this. That's just come out of the oven, that is. Alright, that's all uh, that's all cooked now. So just gonna let that rest for a bit. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna thicken this up a little bit. Now you can use corn flour if you want and add some salt and pepper and stuff. I'm just gonna use quick some gravy granules. Just to get a little bit of body into it. And that just give it that extra flavour. So I'll just get this, I'll just stir this round, let this simmer off and thicken up, then we'll come back to you. Right, that's the meat out. It's just, uh, I'm going to cut this. Just have a look inside here. Eh? Oh, yes. Yes, that'll do me. Right, I'm going to cover that up, leave that to rest, and I'm going to serve it on a plate, then I'll come back to you. Right, get this um, turned up. Now remember I said save the old uh, beetroot stalks and this is why. Using the pan that we said to um, beef in, so all we're going to do is get these straight into the pan. If you've got leaves on them, cook them as well. And it's only going to take a couple of minutes to do. Right, and there we have it. Whoa, look at that, look at that. That's come out absolutely gorgeous, that have. Well, can't knock that. Yorkshire puddings and everything. That is gorgeous. Right, let's get down there and have a go. Right. Obviously, it isn't complete without the old red wine and beef gravy. So we'll have a little drizzle of that. Caught the smell of red wine. Now we're looking good. Now we are looking good. Right, let's uh, just have a little go of this uh, lovely beef. Oh. oh yes, there we go, lovely. Right, let's get you up here a bit. Right, what is this like? Never done it before, I was in the recipe but never done it. So here we go. Mmm, that is nice. Mmm, wow. The lovely beetroot, go for it. That is so sweet. I've never done beetroot like this before. I've always had it a jar with vinegar. 
that is so nice. The sweetness of it. I like beetroot at any time. That is really, really nice. Have a little go of these beetroot stalks. Mm. Well, I would really recommend doing this. I really would. Oh, yeah. Yorkshire puddings as well. Cool. That's top. Mmm. Quite different as well. Quite nice. Try it at home, honestly. I might might be a bit of a faff around. But try it. Just try it out. Um, I mean, you can go straight to his um, recipe if you want. That's all over social media, roast beef and beetroot, James Martin. If you afford it, use a fillet steak. Use more expensive red wine. I'm happy with this. Mm. To this. Right. Thumbs up if you like this. Comments below. Credit obviously good to James Martin, not me. I'll take the credit for Yorkshire puddings, but that's about it. Um, yeah, if you didn't subscribe yet, please consider doing so. And um, I'll catch you lovely people in the next one. Please try this. Uh -huh. If you like cooking, try it. That is absolutely gorgeous. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Cheers.